ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराणल नमा भगवत्दशंक लोकशंक अहंकार से तादात्म्यम चिच्छाया देह साक्षि सहज कर्मज भ्रांतिजन्यंक्रमात सो दिस इज दि दृदृश्य विवेक टेक्स्ट स्टार्टेड टू इयर्स बैक इट इज लाइक इट इज नॉट लाइक अ मैंगो फ्रूट इट इज लाइक अ बंच ऑफ ग्रेप्स अ मैंगो फ्रूट मीन्स यू हैव टू बिगिन एंड एंड इट ऑल दि वे यू कैन नॉट ईट पीसेस आउट ऑफ इट दर इज नॉट दि वे टू ईट अ मैंगो फ्रूट एर एस दि ग्रेप्स यू नीड नॉट बिगिन एट अ पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट एनी वेर यू कैन बिगिन एंड यू कैन स्टॉप इन द मिडल एंड बिगिन अगेन ईच ग्रेप इज कंप्लीट इन इट सेल्फ ओके दीज वर्सेस आर लाइक दैट देर फॉर यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द स्पिरिट ऑफ um taking the text in multiple parts otherwise if you want the text to be started and completed we will do it let us have a deal you stay here for 20 days i will take two classes per day and we will complete it let us come to a deal and inform the office they will arrange accordingly but you want to stay here two and a half days that too in between you run here and there <laughs> and i have to complete a text means so i have to choose a text which resembles a bunch of grapes not a mango fruit like panchati shet etc no so bunch of grapes kind of text you take and teach it piece after piece every piece is complete in itself you don't lose anything that is the idea of this text some people call it vakya sudha the name given to it Maharaj, when Maharaj said that it's okay, you can call it Vakya Sudha. It doesn't mean anything. So Vakya is sentence. A sentence about what? It could be as well a text of physics or even sociology. So that doesn't mean anything. This is the name. Whereas Drukdrusya Vivekaha, it means everything. That is the name. Standard name is Drukdrusya Vivekaha. and if you see anywhere vakya sudha it's okay that name is also there but not a very nice name i in my opinion and then uh, the text uh, aims at helping us to know ourselves when i say you doesn't mean the people sitting here same is the case with i also these two pronouns are used in general way so you have to know yourself that is the topic of this text you have to know yourself so don't say i know myself already don't say that because uh, you do not know yourself how do you know how do i know that you do not know yourself <laughs> how do i know do i have a crystal ball or what yeah kind of crystal ball only so people are in bondage they are samsaris they are unhappy and insecure they have secured everything yet remain insecure they have all the gadgets of happiness and pleasure but still they remain unhappy they have uh, seen the religion to to its end they have uh, they, they they took the religion and exhausted it all kinds of rituals vishnu vishnu shiva shakti rudra all rituals they have done they have left nothing and yet they are where they are not one inch movement therefore they have covered dharma artha kama that is what i was saying but still remain ignorant unhappy and insecure what could be the reason for that you have these are all very weighty matters why are we unhappy we were uh, the cream of the society back in india many of you and then uh, we migrated here because this is a land of opportunity and land of plenty 
and having come here we are doing quite well even i am doing quite well what to speak of you <laughs> so therefore so then we have a, we brought the religion along with us the shaiva back there we brought shaiva here the vaishnava back there we brought vaishnava here the shaktiya back there we brought the shaktiya here and all the gurus there we have transported them and put them here also we have we have not left one leaf unturned and yet we remain a bag of bones what could be the reason the reason is very simple i give an example sometimes i wonder is the example has become silly or what no it doesn't look silly to me so i i got up early morning the first thing i need is a cup of coffee right you are going to understand that so therefore the coffee maker ready put water and some milk and then coffee powder and put the switch on it gives coffee not like back in india so it is all machines and you will get coffee why don't you do that so why do you put the light on you can as well which is important the light on or the coffee which is important coffee is important not the light it light will not make you uh, get that satisfaction of uh, coffee right you don't need light you need coffee when you get up suppose uh, you focus on coffee making without putting the light on how that will be you will be you will be hitting your head on the wall you will be fumbling at the door and fall and uh, you may put uh, instead of milk you may put something else in the coffee so though your goal is a, a nice cup of coffee early in the morning the first thing that you have to do is put the light on in life you don't do that i'm sorry to say this you just don't do that you are busy making money you are busy enjoying pleasures you are busy worshiping gods and goddesses without putting the light of self knowledge on what can be more preposterous than that you should know yourself first then make money it won't bind you you know yourself then enjoy pleasures you will not become sick bhoge roga bhayam why people become sick because they they pursue bhoga wrongly they they pursue bhoga wrongly the other day a gentleman came to me asking for some financial help which is fine elderly and he himself he could have asked me please give me this much i need it i could have given but he told me the reason i did not ask him for the reason so he told me the reason that he went to ozone hospital there is a hospital like that in hyderabad ozone look at that oxygen hospital ozone hospital good names so and they made a scheme of things he is diabetic and they made a scheme of things which requires money and i have to give it to him i gave him i don't deny but i told with this method you will remain a permanent patient of ozone hospital you will never come out of ozone hospital i am predicting you will come back to me by the time i go to america and come back you will be here again because ozone hospital has given a new set of tests and medicines that is not the way eh? that is not a solution so i asked so he is obliged to answer me because the kind of situation is like that what is the food that you eat what is your age and what is the food you eat no my age is 65 you are younger to me and you have sugar why you should you have sugar you, there is no reason and you should have reversed it long back why don't you reverse it because you like to have the food the way you like it wrong you have to change the food habits anyway i am telling you so bhoge roga bhayam you enjoy pleasures end up sick and go after the medical establishment that is the bhoga 
So then, uh, is there an, do you see any sense or logic or any meaning in all the kinds of rituals and worships that are going on in the popular religion? Do you see? I don't see it. I am telling you frankly. I see a lot of confusion. So, so I am confused. Paran confusayanti. That is how it is going on. The person who doesn't know Rama Shabda, how can he guide you in um, religion? What religious practice can he guide you in? No way. Therefore, andhena uh, ivaniyamana yathandha avidyaya mantare vartamana. This is all said earlier. In the Kathopanishad, all this is said. And you want an example for that? Our society is the example. A ready-made example sitting before us. Therefore, people have to understand the discrimination, viveka. What they should know is viveka. People want to know something which is sitting there. Some big boulder-like thing, Brahma. Some people do not even pronounce it properly. So, that we have to know. No, that is not the way. You need not know Brahma. Okay? You have to, what all knowledge, in terms of a positive knowledge, that I know what is carbon, I know what is a diamond, I know what is gold, I know what is New York, all such positive knowledge, all knowledge is but ni science. That is not knowledge. It is all nama rupa, names and forms, which are unreal. That is not knowledge. Knowledge is, I know the discrimination, I know the distinction. This food is good for health, this food is not. That is knowledge. This act is pious, whereas this act is not pious. You cut a tree, it is not pious. And uh, so you know the discrimination, the difference between the, dis- the, the discrimination or discernment, if you will, that is knowledge. All knowledge which uplifts the human being is in the form of viveka. All knowledge. People, they quote Shankara, good, that is fine, they read Shankara, they quote Shankara, but sometimes it is possible that they miss the central point of Shankara, and that it is the central point is not Jnanam, not Jnanam. What you call Jnanam is accumulation of information in the head, called Google Guru. Google is not a self-elaborated soul, Google is a Jada. Even chart GPT is also Jada. So, <laughs> therefore, uh, that is not knowledge. That is all burden and accumulation. Like you, people are accustomed for accumulation. They accumulate money up to a point, and then they start accumulating pleasures up to a point, and then they start accumulating power up to a point, and then they start accumulating knowledge. There is no difference between the four. All are same. Nothing superior, nothing inferior. What you need is not accumulation of knowledge. That kind of knowledge, even if it is Vedantic knowledge, doesn't serve a purpose to you. I am saying things this morning to you, which you may want to pay attention. Why should I do that? So, why not be politically correct and acquire some kudos, this and that? Why should I be so frank and fair and forthright? Shall I tell you the reason? Or can I proceed without telling the reason? The reason is, I love you all. That is the reason. You may not believe it, or you may doubt it, or you may not understand it, but from my side, the truth is, you, I love you all, every single individual, I love you as the Atma. And therefore I feel while sitting here, I should make you think. 
if possible, if necessary, show the mirror, make you think. And uh, if you start thinking, I feel that I am fulfilled, the effort is fruitful. That's why I am saying these things. Therefore, knowledge that we are looking at is in the form of discrimination. So, what is the right food, what is the wrong food? You should discriminate. Otherwise, uh, you will become sick in the old age. Sick means everybody becomes sick in the old age. But there is a sickness that can be managed meaningfully. And there is a sickness that pulls you, pulls you down and makes life miserable. There is a difference between the two. Uh, so, therefore, that is knowledge. What to eat and what not to eat, that is knowledge. And I go one step and tell, that is self-knowledge. You know why? Because by knowing which food is right and which food is wrong, you keep the body healthy, thereby mind cheerful, that paves the way for knowing your true self. And you don't follow that, you assume that there is a thing called self-knowledge there, on the other side of the river, and you have to cross the river and reach there. In the meanwhile, you can eat anything you want, you can do anything you want, you are kidding, I tell you. Therefore, that is self-knowledge. What to eat and what not to eat. That knowledge, that it is rather discrimination. Viveka, we call it. So, vichir prathak bhave, riddhidhatu. So, you separate the rice and the sesame seeds. Tela tandula viveka. Rice grains are white or semi-white, cream-colored. Sesame is black in color. They are mixed, unfortunately. You separate one from the other. It doesn't matter which one from which other. Either way, it's okay. That is the viveka. That is what you need. You have to begin with food. That is, you have to begin it with food. Unfortunately, you don't do that and the pay price. You see, the laws of nature are most unforgiving. They do not respect personalities, they strike. So the blood test doesn't respect the name, personality, status. I am a spiritual person, so my blood test should be more somewhat different. It won't be. Okay? Blood test is the... Blood test tells you whether you are eligible for self-knowledge or not. I tell you. Therefore, so, this is self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is not some exotic, esoteric thing sitting somewhere on the other side of the river and you cross the river with the help of the Guru Maharaj and reach it and embrace it. You are, you are dreaming. It is not going to happen. There is no such thing. Self-knowledge is, Atma Jnana is only this much. Atma and Atma Viveka. The discrimination between the self and the non-self. And uh, you see, when we look at the word, the, the word look in English and the word loka in Sanskrit have the same root. You can see that. You know, it is not. Uh, you need not be a linguist uh, for seeing that. Uh, look, loka. Uh, don't you see that? So lokyate iti lokaha. Loka is that which you look at. That is loka. That is the world. So the world is not what is. That is not the way to look at it. That is not the way to understand it. Already your understanding is faulty. The world is not what it is. If the world is what it is, how come it changes by tomorrow? It is not the same America which was ten years back. So it is not what it is. It is not what it is today compared with the, the America that you knew twenty years back. Even India is not the same as it is. So it is not what is. It is what appears. Drushyate. You got the, I don't want to go into the topic. It's a big topic. Okay? So it appears. Now you should ask the question. Okay, it is appearing. You mean to say it is not there and yet appearing? You should ask this question. 
Why don't you ask a few questions? Not to me, you should ask to yourself. Yes, Swami, you are saying the world is what looks, what appears, you are saying. So, when we say the world is what is, you question it, you contest it, but I say the world is what appears. So you mean to say, yes, Swami, you mean to say it appears, but it is not there? Or it appears and it is there? What is the, what is going on? You tell me. Like that you should catch my collar and ask. You should ask. Okay, I'll briefly tell you, I will not dwell upon the topic. So, the world certainly appears, but it is like the movie. What is your conclusion about the movie? It appears, and we go to movie theater, we used to run and go to the movies. So, we go to the movies, not because what appeared is real, not for that reason we went. We went because... We knew even in that young age, we knew that the blessed thing appears, but it is not real. You know how we knew? Every single time. We used to sit on the floor and watch the movie. (laughs) Not in the chair. We sit on the floor and watch the movie. So because floor ticket doesn't cost much. Chair costs a lot. And so with one chair ticket, you can see three movies sitting on the floor. That is the bargain. And so, sit on the floor and watch movie. And the movie is over. And in India, when the movie is over, he will say Shubham. Not like Hollywood. They don't know what to say at the end of the movie. They show all kinds of names for... Uh, who reads those names? You say Shubham. That is the way to say it. I want to give this advice to some of the Hollywood people, but I never come across them. Okay. Therefore, Shubham. The moment it says Shubham, we get up and uh, dust off the pelt or shirt or whatever and come home. Because the entire blessed thing that we have seen, got absorbed, enjoyed, all of it is only that much. It appears, but it is not. We have a name for it, Loka. This is pointed out by Ramana Maharshi. He said, Bhuloka, Swarga Loka, so Vishnu Loka, Vaikuddha Loka, Kailasa Loka, 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 you say, do you know the meaning of Loka? Loka is what appears without ever being there. So you should know the difference. So appears to whom? That is the question. You should ask that question. Because what appears is not real. It is only an appearance. What appears is an appearance. But then it appears to whom? It appears to myself. Don't say me. Don't say me. Me is not such a good word. It appears to myself. Druk. There is a hell, a whole lot of a difference, discrimination, discernment between the one to whom it appears, Druk, and the thing that appears, Drushya. The difference you should know. So, where to start? Start with the drushya or drukha. Suppose you go to movie, and now you want to explain, you want to understand the whole situation. The movie there, on the screen, and I am watching it. That is the situation. And you want to understand it. Where do you start? You don't start with the movie. Right? You start with yourself. Once I ran to the movie, and next day morning I appeared before my father. He asked yesterday, you did not appear to me in the evening and night also, Amma told that you did not come early. You must have run away for the movie. I, I just looked at him. That is the truth. Then he said, you should think. You should think. It is a movie, and you are immovable. You should think the difference between the two. So movie, it moves and moves and vanishes. A thing that is moving and moving and moving, what it will happen to it? It vanishes. Body moves and moves and moves, vanishes. Mind moves and moves and moves, vanishes. The film on the screen moves, moves, moves. The reel is over, the movie vanishes. But there is one who doesn't vanish, the immovable the immutable, 
that is yourself. You are student of, you are studying Sanskrit and Veda, and now you are after the movie, instead of trying to know the immovable, that is what he told. I, I smiled and ran away. But then uh, it is there, it is imprinted. Therefore, you have, when it is a, a combination of Druk and Drishya, Drishya and Druk, they are not of the same order of reality. They are not equally real. Say that more clear. If you say they are not same order of reality, then it is second order reality, first order reality, that is like that there are chemical reactions, you know, first order reaction, second order, third order are very rare. Right? So don't fall into that kind of a technical language, jargon, simple. So the movie that you see is not real, the one who sees is real, movable, immovable. That is the difference. So, therefore, you have to start with yourself. You don't start with the movie, you start with yourself. It will take you a long way ahead. That doesn't mean you will become a sannyasi and all that. That is not what I mean. It only means you will become secure and happy. What more you want? Do you want anything more than that? You become secure for the very first time and happy, really happy. That is called moksha here and now. Moksha is freedom. What is this freedom? You are secure, irrespective of the apparatus of security around. Mahatmas are very secure people. Why? They don't find any reason to be afraid of anything or anybody. They are not afraid. Fear just doesn't enter into their consciousness. That is the secure. Whereas worldly people, they put a variety of securities around them. In fact, they invest in securities also, which are very insecure, really speaking. So, they have a variety of securities, including religion. They have, they are so clever that they have all secure, religious securities in place. You start a project, worship Vigneshwara. You st you start you if you 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 are worried about some evil elements, worship Hanuman. Uh, so like that, all systems you have in place, religious religiously also. So in a worldly sense, you have secured everything. That is the language they use in America. You have to secure. Okay. America said that we will secure Iraq. You, you remember that language? And then they said we will secure Fallujah. <laughs> now you know what they secured. <laughs> they took all the bombs, uh, aeroplanes, money, fuel, people, and put there to secure Fallujah. They could not say, they, there is no such thing. It's not that there is a thing called securing Fallujah. You don't secure anything. And then they understood the same thing in Afghanistan also. Look at that. So our, our worldly people are no different. They are constantly in, uh, engaged in securing. And they will be doing that till they fall dead. That is, you don't secure anything in this world. Whereas Mahatmas are very secure. You know why? What is the secret? Because they don't find any need to secure anything. What is there to secure? You cannot secure the body. You cannot secure the mind. Atma doesn't need security. You got it all wrong in terms of security. Therefore, uh, the security, you, you have that security, natural security and happiness. You know what is happiness? A Mahatma is happy for no reason. Reasonless happiness is a true happiness. When you need a reason to be happy, that is misery, I tell you. That is misery, it is not happiness. All of this is viveka. You know what viveka discrimination? What is happiness, what is not? What is security, what is not? So, 
when you know yourself, Druk, it is not that presently I don't know myself. This also is a misconception. Presently I don't know myself. Knowledge of myself, I am on this bank of the river. Life is river, you know. Life is river. Flow, flow of time. So I am on this bank of the river. And uh, like they say, we are standing on this bank of the river, but uh, the temple is on the other bank of the river. You can see from a distance. So, to Nelakanti temple, other bank of the river. So you have to cross the river and uh, then reach Nelakanti. Similarly, I am on this branch, this bank of the river of life, and uh, there is the other bank, and uh, there there is moksha, there is happiness, there is security. There cannot be anything worse, wrong, more wrong than that. So the security, the happiness, put together called freedom, moksha, is not on the other side of the river. It is this side of the river, and it is here, and now, and in you. That is the druk. Therefore, so then how to realize it, how to know it, you can say. How to know it, knowing is realization. How to realize it? You see, suppose this is a flask, and they have an interesting design it is, somewhat complex design. So in India you just open and drink it, but this is not like that. This is one lever here, and you have to put it like that. And another lever here, you have to push it down. Then the blessed thing opens. Yeah, now it opens. And then you can drink water. How do I know all that? By watching, by observing. You know a thing by observing it, very simple. Some people, they don't want to observe. We don't want to observe. Why? Our Guru will observe. Buddha. What your Guru will observe? You have to observe. Suppose your Guru knows how to drink water and you remain thirsty. So, you have to observe, not the Guru. Don't hand over anything to the Guru. You may hand over shopping to the wife, etc. <laughs> but not to self knowledge to the Guru. You have to know, Guru, you cannot hand over knowledge to somebody else, uh, even if that somebody else is called Guru Maharaj. Therefore, you have to look at yourself. Very simple. Look at yourself. When you look at yourself with an open mind. Suppose, I am a, I am an officer. I already decided. I am an officer. Now I will look at myself wrong. That is not open-mindedness. I am a Vedantin. I am a Swami, teacher of Vedanta, Guru. Now I look at myself. That is not the way to look at myself. Therefore, how to look at myself? You put aside all ideas, notions and prejudices that you have built around yourself. And uh, then look at yourself. Somebody asked me, will you teach Vedanta to uh, a few families? I said, no, I won't teach. I won't. That doesn't work with me. I'm telling you very frankly. You know why? Because the families come. What is a family? Me, my wife, they sit side by side also in meditation. <laughs> me and my wife, and then uh, my son and my daughter, they are outside playing, and me and myself, my wife is doing meditation. Ye kya baat hai bhai? This is not Vedanta. No. Because once you decided you are a father, uh, wife and children, uh, you are not looking at yourself. You have already, uh, you have already enclosed yourself in a, in a myth. And uh, through that prism, you sit inside that myth, and uh, through that uh, wall, you enclose your, yourself in a wall, and through that you will see uh, the Vedanta. And the poor Swami comes and tells, Atma Asangaha, Atma is not father, mother, etc. I did it one time. 
and one of the elderly ladies sitting in that corner, sixth row or seventh row, I remember very vividly, got up. Generally questions are reserved for the satsang, but she got up. I respect. I asked her, so you mean to say I am not grandma? I said, no. What are you talking? Grandma has to stay at home and bring up the children so that they will know all the pujas and all that. And you now say to me that I am not the grandma. Then I told her, Ma, I am not the teacher for you. You came to a wrong class. <laughs> but it is up to you. I suggest you are here. That is a one-week camp. So stay here for one week and listen and see what happens. You can write any questions for that. She came to me after one week and told me, Swami, I think I understand what you are talking. So you got the point. Therefore, you put a title beforehand. Family, patron. Upadhi, pahale banadiya upadhi. Now there is no self-knowledge. There is only one upadhi that you should have, hold on to, jijñāsu. That is what you are. You aspire to know yourself. That is the upadhi. Other than, that is also an upadhi, but it will be given up later. It will fall off. But every other upadhi is dismissed. So to that extent you have to become open. That is the level of openness I am talking about. You are totally open. Which means you are very innocent, absolutely innocent. And then you look at yourself. Then you will understand yourself. That is the study of Drugdrushya Viveka. Now, enough introduction. I don't want to spend the whole class in introduction. We don't have too many classes. But some introduction has to be given so that the Perspective is put before you, and the verse can be explained in the light of that perspective. So, you look at yourself. You have three experiences. We are talking of experiences. We are not talking of concepts or ideas or notions or the thought processes. Okay? That is all in the head. Forget about it. It has no value. It may, val it may have value in the marketplace. Suppose you go to Walmart, you should know a few things. Uh, so that is necessary to steer yourself inside the Walmart. But here, uh, what all you know and you have accumulated in your head, uh, it doesn't help, it becomes an obstacle, it is already a burden for you, which you don't realize. And uh, so you put all of that aside. Be like a clean slate, with an open mind, don't assume yourself to be anything. You are not mother, father, you are not male, female, you are not Brahmana, Kshatriya, you are not Indian, American, you are not Hindu, Christian, you are none of these things. So every, sing, you are, every single upadhi, people, uh, upadhi is an adjunct. Some of these upadhis, people are very proud. That doesn't work in Vedanta. It works elsewhere. Some of the upadhis make people shy. Shy are even embarrassed, some of the upadhis. So, you need not bother about all, any of these upadhis. All the upadhis are put aside like a clean slate. So, uh, I, I hear a song, I heard a song. I ain't a man, I ain't a woman. I ain't a father, I ain't a mother. I ain't a daughter, I ain't a son. I ain't a brother, I ain't a sister. I ain't means I am not. Something like that. Ye I am hypostrophe and T. You got it? So that is the, you get hold of that song and sing it for yourself. <laughs> okay. So, with that kind of an openness, which is a great blessing, that you can become open that way, itself is a great blessing. Then the light of wisdom shines in you when you are open that way. And uh, do not carry any past baggage for God's sake. Do not carry that. Do not compare Swamis, this Swami, that Swami, oh, that uh, mission, this organization. Don't do all these comparisons. I know you have covered the entire crowd. I know all that. 
So keep an open mind and look at yourself. So Druk, you are the one who looks and therefore be a Druk, be a Druk for God's sake and look at yourself. Only thing is you look not at the other, you look at yourself. And now you recognize, of course with the help of the text Shankara helps you. And with the help of, then what the thing that I am doing here between Shankara and you, I don't want to stand between Shankara and you. I am not there. I, I will vanish. But Shankara has written in his Sanskrit, and I seem to know some Sanskrit, that's why I am lingering here. Afterwards, it is between you and Shankara. Shankara shows the way, you follow the way. You forget about this is Swami, TV, etc. You just forget about it. You have to do that. Otherwise, Shankara will not show the way. The prism of the Swami will be standing in between very powerfully, and you don't know anything what Shankara is saying. Shankara says in very simple language, whereas Swamis clothe it in most difficult terms. They convert it into a jargon. That doesn't help. Shankara doesn't put any jargon. So it is all very simple. So, direct to the heart. And uh, so your experiences, he is examining. You have three experiences. When you look at yourself, three experiences. Not three pieces of knowledge, no. Not three thoughts, not three notions, not three concepts, not three ideas. What else can I dismiss? I have dismissed everything. What you experience in your heart, deep within, you feel it. Experience is feeling. So not knowing. What you know is not you, not yours, it is the other. Whereas what you feel is you and yours. So you feel, that's why I am saying three experiences. So that is the word I am using, for want of a better word. Live with whatever words are available. So three, what are the three? I know is one experience you have. This is the part. Why this is the part? It is the part only because a, a cognizing entity is in you. When there is no cognizant, cognizing entity around, that is not a part. It is a part only when there is a cognizing entity, subject-object, you know. Therefore, only because you are a subject, that, that is the part, object. And what is the subject? The one who knows, I know, that experience you have. You, you may not be articulating it, you may not be saying it in so many words. You walk into the hall, you know, people are sitting, uh, uh, chairs are there, you know, even the entire ambience you know. And then you choose your seat and sit, and then you listen to the Swami, because you know. That is your experience very primordial experience, the deep experience inside, that is with you. I hope you don't deny that, okay? Suppose you deny, then that means you have known and denied. Therefore you still know, I know. Then there is another, I do, I do. People are caught in this, I do this, I do that. People are caught. You are caught, I am caught, everybody is caught. I do. They don't examine. They don't examine. Hmm? So I eat, you say. I digest, you don't say that, thank God. <laughs> you don't say that. Therefore, when it is convenient, you say, I do. When it is not convenient, you don't say, I do. You, you skip, I do. So, like, I beat the heart, you say that, you don't say that, you go to the, you rush to the cardiologist, I beat the, if you beat the heart, beat it properly, why do you beat it improperly, on and off? So, you don't beat the heart, uh, something else is there, whereas, I do, this I do, wherever it fits into your thinking, wherever you are conditioned to feel that way, I do, I do. So I bring the sun into the rising in the east. You don't say that. I worship the sun, that you say. Therefore this sense of I do, you have to examine it. 
इट इज नॉट करेक्ट जस्ट नो आई हैव शोन यू हाउ हाउ पार्शल यू आर हाउ इनकरेक्ट यू आर समटाइम्स यू से आई डू समटाइम्स यू से आई डोट यू डोंट से आई डू सो दिस आई डू थिंग इट इज ए वेरी फनी थिंग यू डो नॉट से आई ब्रीद इन एंड आई ब्रीद आउट यू डोंट से दैट बट यू से आई गिव मनी टू यू सो लाइक दैट सो यू एम इफ नॉट गिविंग मनी समथिंग एल्स आई ईट ब्रेकफास्ट यू से बट हू डाइजेस्ट द ब्रेकफास्ट यू डोंट क्लेम इट थैंक गॉड यू आर नॉट क्लेमिंग सो दिस दिस आई डू थिंग इज इज ए कैन ऑफ वर्म्स and we have to open the can we have to open it because this i do is we have to examine it second when i was saying this in that in that in that building the earlier building where i was teaching one physics professor came he could not contain his frustration when i was talking like this i have a habit of talking with a lot of enthusiasm sometimes <laughs> so he could not uh, contain his frustration and he got up and told hey swami what do you what are you talking i i came to the class i drove 60 miles and came to the class i do i do or i don't do see what he told you see how frustrated he is so so this was put before ramana maharshi also This is a similar situation he told i he person told i traveled from madras to here he said you did not travel you sat in the train and the train ran then you sat in the jet car horse driven cart and the horse ran and the jet car ran and now you are sitting before me you are sitting sitting and again sitting and you say i do you have not done anything that is what ravana maharshi said <laughs> therefore this i do is a, is a is a thing that requires a serious examination but nobody will tell you this you go to the marketplace they won't tell you that i do is wrong they will encourage you please think of doing it please think of take the credit card out and do <laughs> do or whatever so therefore in the market place nobody will tell that the i do is is all gadabeda you have to examine and nobody will tell then you go to a temple will they tell at least they should tell are appa i do bhagwan does everything you don't do they don't do that bhagwan does or not they won't talk you do what do you do you do this puja you do that puja i do karishye so in the temple also they won't tell they won't examine this issue of i do here we will we are going to examine it so the second experience that we have i do we have that experience for example you sit here and look at me ask and i am sitting here and i am listening to the class am i not doing it so this experience called i do is with the second experience then the third experience is this is where she is a marvelous marvelous stress i cannot uh, over uh, uh, estimate its significance it is such a beautiful verse the third experience that you have which you generally ignore which you do not pay attention to is i am i i have built my 25 minute meditation around i know and i am there is a difference what i said and what i am going to say here here i i know is i know with the help of the mind there in the meditation i know is the pure knowingness the difference is there and uh, please make a note of it I, i i wanted to caution that because i mentioned the meditation so this you you have to examine your experiences i do so i i have this feeling that i do so what is this feeling how it has a reason in the first place and how far it is valid is it valid at all all these things you have to examine that is called vedanta kya bhai people don't even pay attention to what is vedanta that is vedanta it is about you it is called atma vidya it is about you and i do experience you want to examine i know i know me as a subject you are the subject 
you are the timelessly you are the subject you are born and you live a life and it concludes all through this life you are a subject and uh, the scriptures say you are, you continue to be subject even after this life also that is okay that is an extrapolation but at least in this life of 70 80 90 years you are a subject knowing and knowing and knowing all kinds of things of course with the help of head mind and ears and eyes fine but still you are the subject you are behind the mind and ears and uh, eyes and knowing things and uh, knowing sounds and all that you are doing it the whole day not only that your happiness and unhappiness is based on this i know experience a thing is a, a thing makes you happy only after you know it and it makes you unhappy only after you know it somebody has knocked off your purse and you are not unhappy till you realize that you lost your purse and the gentleman lost his purse and he realized it after three days and from then on he remained unhappy <laughs> till then he was like a leaf flying happily so you should know to become happy to become unhappy you should know i know that experience what is this i know experience and what is i am how come i never pay attention to i am so these three experiences we have to examine but uh, before that you have to look at you yourself and find out what is the masala that you have in you masala is raw material do you know the word masala stuff okay what is the masala that you have in you suppose they serve you laddu laddu what is the stuff in it must be some powder oil sugar that is the stuff right three things so like that when you look when you say myself yourself so what is, what are the things that are there in you look at yourself so okay i am looking at myself there is the body gross broadly speaking there is the body and then there is the mind okay broadly speaking between body and mind there are a few other things eh? but i need not recount all of that tatva bodha stuff you know all that so broadly there is, we are in the drushya viveka this is phd stuff it is therefore uh, there is the body and there is the mind that's all only body and mind people think so you see there is a set of philosophers called uh, shunyavadis or lokayatikas or rationalists or agnostics or uh, nastikas etc so they say i am the body and i am the mind that is the end of it they say like that they subscribe to a particular school of thought and they build a, a lot of arguments and the rationale around it okay that is what they are but what about you and me what about us we are not uh, any school school of thought people we are simple people we are not starting a school of thought and all that we are simple people living in this world trying to make some sense out of this life so what about you and me we are also the same so every one of us is familiar with the body i am familiar with the body and i am familiar with the mind and there it ends there it ends no no in vedanta they say there is atma in vedanta they say appa but what about you what do you say are you familiar with atma no no shankara said shankara said guru maharaj said it another acharya said what about you you don't seem to say that you don't you seem to be consumed almost entirely with the body and mind with the welfare of the body and with the comfort comfort is for the body only and with the happiness of the mind with the with the uh, with the pleasure of the mind we are consumed by that for us that is the sum and summation of our existence the body and the mind 
we have to acknowledge it. So, in assuming that way, or in living in that way, living a life uh, as if I am only this much, the body and the mind. That is the life. You look at your life, I look at my life, we are all the same, we are all in the same boat. So, you see, they go to the cruise, okay? Suppose Guru Maharaj goes to the cruise, he is in the same cruise <laughs> as all other revelers are in the same cruise, Guru Maharaj also in the same cruise. It's not that he is somewhere above. After all, we are all human beings. So, how do we live? We live as if we are only this much, the body and the mind. That is how we live. And our entire focus is on the body, its comforts and its pains, etc. And the mind and its uh, pleasures and its, uh, uh, and its uh, pains, uh, emotions, etc. That is how we live. Now the point is, which I try to highlight in the meditation, you are not just the body-mind alone. You are something more than that. That is where the Vedanta begins. That is the starting point of the Vedanta. That is Vedanta. Okay? So, uh, therefore you look at a car, a beautiful car, Mercedes, whatever, very good looking, and inside seats, everything is great. But then there is an engine inside. Engine must be there, otherwise it won't run. Okay, the car, body of the car is there, and then there is the engine which runs the car. Only that much? No. There is a chemical energy in that. What you call fuel, gas they call it, it is gasoline, not gas, but they call it gas. You don't put gas, you put liquid in it, but call it gas. <laughs> so, for chemistry, I was wondering when I came to America long back, when they said gas, gas? <laughs> Are they running the car on this CNG, natural gas? Is that is that it? Probably America? <laughs> no, they are putting liquid only. So it is not gas. But oh, oh why, do I, why do you call it gas? Somebody told me gasoline, apa? Okay, I got it. So you put gas. Gas is what? Gasoline, which is chemical energy. Okay? So that chemical energy is there. So similarly, some example I gave you, some example which came to my mind. So similarly, you are there, uh, the body, the mind, and hence, and also, that is not the end of the story, there is one more thing inside. Let us say inside to begin with, because we are looking inside only, putting the outside aside for a while. So, there is something more inside, and that is the light. Morning meditation I have put it there. And uh, in the meditation, I try to bring this light to focus. Namely, there is the body, and you are aware of it. And there is the mind, and when it is agitated, you are aware of it. And when it is quiet, you are aware of it. But then there is that uh, principle of awareness, the knowingness, if you will. So, that is there. That is the light. It is like in this hall, what are the roof is there, floor is there, chairs are there, stage is there, everything is there. But no, that is not the end of it. There is wind, there is space, and more than that, there is light. Prakasha is there. Without Prakasha, chairs, floor, roof, all of this will not be there. They are there only because of Prakasha. You ignore the Prakasha and pay attention on all other gross things. So the Prakasha is there. Without what, uh, this Jagat, the Prakasha is there. These are the rishis of the your hoary past. The rishis, they looked at the world, the same world they looked at. Technological differences, etc. doesn't mean anything. They looked at the same world and they said, uh, they, they focused on the light, in which the world comes to light, the world shines. 
they focused on that light and they called it bhargaha the light and they said uh, the light is supreme not the physical things not the roads and buildings etc uh, so the light is supreme without light there are no buildings there are no roads there is no society there are no living beings they are all there only when the light is there the light and where is this light all around diviva chakshurata tam you must have heard so all around in this space divi and chakshu is the light atadam pervading everywhere light is everywhere and uh, if something which is godly godly or god if you if you say god god means you make it into a person that's why that's why it is not a person this god is a person attitude it is so anti vedantic so you have to deal with it it is not a person that's why we say god head if you will so there is that light if there is a god head that god head must be that light and that light what is the origin of that light sun savita so that is the gayatri mantra first line first line of gayatri and then uh, the rishi looks within and says there is a light within also dio yona prachodaya at there is a light within and without that light there is no mind there is no body and hence there is no world therefore mind body and the world are in place are are shining only because of that light in you within you therefore the first class is dedicated to pay at paying attention to that light within to begin with body mind and arrive at the light within now i'll conclude the class already time is over i'll ask you which is the essence of the three now we have come to three of the three which is the essence you want to call the body essence or you want to call the mind essence or you want to call the light essence of you you are now three of the three which is the essence which is the primary or primordial if you will so certainly it is a simple question a simple answer it is not the body it is not the mind they are okay they are blessed they are in that place but it is that inner light not physical light when i say inner light if you say, if you make it physical light you become hatha yogi hatha yogi is also called murkha yogi so don't become that when i say the light within it is not the physical light it is not like the physical light it is a metaphor of uh, that uh, stuff of knowingness by which eyes know the forms ears know the sounds etc that stuff of knowingness awareness that light within so which is the essence obviously the light within is the essence the other things are there we are not uh, dismissing them they are there we bless them but the light within is the essence and therefore a name is given to it the name is the sanskrit word which means essence atma atma is the essence therefore you are uh, as you sit here and now it is here and now not some distant future as you sit here and now you are the body the mind and the light within and that light is atma your essence you pay attention to that you look at yourself correctly you don't look at yourself as a bunch of flesh and bones that is not the way to look at yourself you don't look at yourself as a bundle of emotions and frustrations and uh, thoughts and notions no you are that inner light light of awareness if you come to that point then i will finish that verse in the evening class om purnamada purnamada
So I have a couple of announcements. One is that we have these listening devices in case you're having difficulty hearing clearly. You pick it up from the room back there inside the door. You pick it up and uh, off the charger and you have your own earpiece or you can plug in your own earbuds <laughs> with your own volume. You'll hear clearly. Then you just put it back after class for charging. The other thing is we have plenty of these cushions like this in case you want some support under your feet. And one, two, three of these or your back, they're over here on the floor. So that's my two announcements. Harihi Om.